Seniority was central to the uh, power of Southerners during the committee era Congress. Seniority is basically a system whereby if you stayed in office long enough, you moved up the ladder on a committee. So you eventually became chairman. Didn't matter if you were competent, didn't matter if you were loyal to the party, uh, and you just had to stay in office. So for Southerners, that was beautiful because the South was a one party state uh, and it was safe seats were uh, very common in that region. It was easy to win re-election, so a lot of Southerners just moved up. So what you had was by the mid-20th century, Southerners had an inordinate amount of power uh, in this yeah. country, in part because of their hold on this committee uh, system. Why was this, when was the seniority system put in place and why? It's never put into place. It's a norm. It's not a rule, meaning it's a custom that's really adopted at the turn of the 20th century. Oh. And the major reason it starts is people are staying in office longer. In the 19th century, people would come in and out of Congress. But by the 20th century, it's becoming a vocation. Yeah. People are going into Congress and staying for long periods of time. Uh, so in part, it's a way uh, to rationally kind of distribute power in the institution, rather than with every single person deciding you know, what should your ranking yeah. be? They said, well, you'll just move up. Yeah. Two, it was also belief in expertise during yeah. the early 20th century. The idea is if you're in Congress longer, you learn more. And yeah. so you don't have to start fresh every time uh, with someone on a committee. Yeah. Uh, so you gain knowledge. And that was yeah. the second. And, but it also became a tool of power. Yeah. Because if seniority was what determined how high up you were on a committee ladder, it didn't really matter if you followed everything the party wanted. Yeah. Uh, and that was crucial. In the South, as you, I think, mentioned briefly, the South was essentially a one-party, it's always been a one-party section of the country, at least since the Civil War. At first, the party called itself Democrats, and now it calls itself Republicans. But, uh, you know, it was one party, and those folks just stayed around forever. Why did, the, why did people from the North, for lack of a better phrase, put up with that? I mean, it stopped civil rights cold. Let's start there. Absolutely cold. Until the first stirrings, and that's all you can call it, really, in Congress in 1957. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it was good, f uh, it was good for some uh, social welfare economic legislation because the Southerners in Congress helped Roosevelt with the New Deal, but uh, on the other side of it, it was terrible for labor matters, and labor was a very big influence in the 30s and 40s and even into the 50s in this country. Well, all the people whom this harmed, why did they put up with this? Right. Why did, why did the Northern Democrats accept the Southern Democratic power? Uh, part was presidential politics. You know, until the 60s, Democrats counted on the South to put their men in office. And uh, that was very important. It's not really until the Civil Rights Act of 64 that you have a president like Johnson saying, well, if I give up the South, so be it. Yeah. Uh, part was that old Northerners basically accepted the system. Even though Southerners were very powerful, there were Democrats who gained, Northern Democrats who were also influential. Emanuel Seller yeah. is a Democrat from New York who really learned that old system. So he yeah. doesn't want to blow it apart either. Yeah. And finally, there's the fact that other than civil rights and labor issues in the South, Southerners weren't that unified. So until the 50s or 60s, being a Southerner didn't necessarily mean being conservative. Southerners not only supported the New Deal, they were behind agricultural programs, they were behind poverty programs, so they were a diverse lot. Part of what happens is civil rights makes the Southerner a conservative, and it kind of changes the political equation for many Northern Democrats. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden say, we can't have them in the party anymore. We can't have them have, have so much power. Yeah. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.